are going to deal with downtime need for effective BCP planning. And for this, I would like to invite on stage Mr. Chandramouli Govardhanam, who is SVP IT at HDFC Bank. Giving a brief introduction, Chandramouli is a technology leader with 17 plus years of experience across various aspects of product value chain, including 7 plus years of technical leadership experience. He specializes in building teams and is currently leading a team of enthusiastic engineers. With this, let's welcome him with a big round of applause. A very good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, so, I would go back to basics because I'm uh, someone who believes in doing a lot of things at the basic level. Uh, so, I would want it also to be interactive. Can someone tell me what does uh, BCP or DR means to you? Correct. So, it should continue without failure. Uh, what is, there is an uh, availability number 5 nines, 6 nines, 4 nines. So, where do you see your organization being or, or anybody can throw the number? Is it 5 nines, 4 nines, 3 nines? Yes, 5 nines, right? Anyone else would want to volunteer and Okay, <clears throat> why I ask this, thanks for uh, giving the answers. Uh, my thought process on BCP started with my very first experience, which was with, uh, I was a kernel developer for a system called as non-stop systems. As the name suggests, it is non-stop. There is, uh, I remember there is uh, Citibank who was the first customer of that system in 1970s. Huh? So for 25 years, they had zero down. Right. I don't know what is 5, 9, 6, 9, 7, nines in that, but that's the kind of system that I started my career with. So, I was curious and I started to think, how is someone able to make a system which runs forever without any downtime? So, I'm, I'm trying to share some of the thought process in that. I would be happy if uh, we can go back with some thought process on what can be done to each of our systems to improve a little bit on it. Right. So, this is so that we understand uh, the construct. Imagine uh, the outage event is a, a throw of a dice, right? And the moment you throw one on a dice, it's an outage. That means you have 83.33% uh, is your SLA, right? So, that is that is your SLO, right? Uh, but if you have four dice and you are throwing them and even if one of them throws one, there is an outage. That means your outage is actually 0.833 to the power of 4 because uh, and that becomes a much smaller number 48.22, right. This is where I have seen a lot of challenges happen. When, when people construct systems, they look at one piece and they are like, I am making this as available as possible. But when you put them in serial constructs together, you have to understand it is the weakest links failure which results in an incident, right? So, uh, this is very important to remember. I am just extrapolating it. So, if I have systems in serial connection, right? And, and that means uh, even if you are putting a 3.9 system, right? Uh, if I put them together like this, it becomes 99.6, uh, forgive the font, uh, it's 99.6 would become the availability SLO. Uh, but if I put it in series, if I do this, it is approximately, uh, after this there are 8, so it is around uh, um, 11, it's 11 nines of availability, just a construct of the same availability box placed differently. The point here uh, is what I learned from the non-stop systems. So, for every single piece starting, so all of you know the OSI uh, 7 layers, right? It is not just at the network, not just at the hardware layer where they try to fix the availability, it is all the 7 layers. Which means an application should be capable 
of having an alternate path. Okay, so there should be no single point of failure. Uh, this is the focus. No single point of failure. Every single piece should have an alternate path to go to. Just to give an example, uh, the constructed non-stop is somewhat like this. You have a CPU, right? And the CPU needs to have a connectivity with other CPUs. So there are two network paths, there are two NIC cards, two network paths. So if one fails, the other one takes over. And CPU is not a single CPU, it's two CPUs to which the instruction go at the same time. They execute. Even if one fails, the other one works and each of them have their own memory. So this is this level of its redundancy, but that's how they manage to do it. Right? So uh, Taking it forward to our, uh, what we are working, I, I'm trying to push through some facts here. If you feel that it's going too fast, please interrupt me with a question. I'll be more than happy. Right? So this is what a, a data center looks like today. Right? And, and uh, when you look at multiple layers, people are happy to say, hey, we have so many layers, I, I get scared. Because that increases the amount of failures that one can have. Right? And, which means we have to plan for that. It's, it's, uh, it's just that you need to have alternate route for every single thing. Uh, and some of these are software. Some of these are in your programs itself. Uh, if if, if uh, a development team comes to you and say, hey, I'll write whatever code I want, I'll give it to you. Now you make it available, that's not possible, sir. So we might have to go back and tell them, you know what? It's a collaborative effort. Availability is all of our responsibility, right? Does this look familiar, right? Yes, no, maybe? Okay, thank you. So in the basics, uh, let, let me talk of a web application. So you have first, uh, from the internet, the traffic coming in. You have the various security layers. Uh, then you have, once it comes in, you have a web service layer and that receives it and then you have the application layer and then you have a database layer at the least, right? So uh, I think somewhere uh, we have got it right with the layers above. Correct me if I'm wrong. Most of the places you do not find failures at layers above the application layer affecting you. Yes, no, maybe? Can, can someone, you've heard of incidents where, I'm sorry? Maybe, right? Uh, so uh, I understand where you come from. Probably your DNS is down. Your, your, um, so now a lot of people have started to have alternate routes for DNS, right? So that's a, that's a good practice, fairly good practice. Immaterial of whether you are, uh, actually you have a better control if you are on-prem. If you are going on cloud, you don't have a choice, right? In, uh, in on-prem, you have a, a, a setup which you really know well. You know uh, the lifespan of each of the component. Uh, to give an example, we, we were trying out one of the software uh, called as Aerospike. We were trying to do a POC with it. We put it on cloud. We had a, a, a thought of various availability pieces. We designed it. It was just a POC, right? Uh, we did a, a, a replication factor of three. And we had uh, three racks. Uh, I'm going into details. Uh, again, I would repeat, if you feel that I need to break it down further or explain some pieces, let me know. Right? I want it to be interactive. I'm trying to put in facts for that reason. So we had three uh, as a replication factor. And we started to use. There was an unexpected failure. And we, we started to wonder, why is this failure happening? It was not a failure of a component, but uh, the speed at which from the uh, write cache it was going into the disk because that particular component of its lifespan degraded that slowed down so the buffer was building up right and the write started to fail though there was redundancy had the node failed it would have worked <laughs> right so this was a beautiful scenario for us to understand, hey, which means that is another factor for us to note, right? When when the buffer builds, it's better for me to kill it and bring it up. So, uh, what I'm trying to drive at here is, it's very important for you to understand each of the component, how it works, how are you using it, 
and build together build together a business uh, continuity plan there is another term which is floating i am going on to another topic which is uh, called as active active versus bcdr any of you can help me understand what is uh, active active or any of you using active active kind of setup yeah yes please perfect sure yeah so in both the cases we replicate right the the only difference is uh, so coming from experience so at hdfc back we have this i i'm sure all of you would have this dr activity where you will try to switch over from your data center to the da data recovery center and then some things will not work then you'll roll back you'll correct it and then you'll come back right so but we do that because uh, uh, you want to ensure that you are available and ready when actual disaster happens correct active active approach is slightly different you still have the same kind of setup but what you do is you throw the traffic to both your dc and dr how uh, is it customer half the customer go here half the customer go here or you are having a, a you don't have a context for each of the requests so either can go here or here it's up to your application right it, it depends upon your application in our case more often than not there is a context so we are looking at having customer based uh, active active which means half the customers go to one data center the other half go to the other data center we scale up the data center for the uh, sizing of the entire customer base so even if one entire data center goes down you can switch over here right that is at the top level the network traffic coming in uh, if we find that uh, at the the global load balancer if there is a challenge uh, we would have rules over there to automatically switch 15 10 okay uh, automatically switch but the switch back is manual otherwise we'll start to have kind of switching back and forth right so this is one mechanism uh, which has helped us quite a bit um, so it it helped us uh, put in uh, if i had an underlying system availability of 99.9 uh, it helps me take it to 99.995 that's a huge win for for underlying system being 99.9 availability right so this is one hack the next one is uh, uh, a simple hack at the application level uh, where at the application typically you would, you would assume that it is uh, some networking magic or, or it's an infra magic with which you will make the database availability rather we have done a client library which has a retry mechanism and, and when, when it fails to connect to the DC it will connect to the DR which means for everything we will use fully qualified uh, DNS names uh, and uh, when it, when, when, when it fails, it will decide for this failure should I switch or not. So we built an intelligent client library which we are using in all our programs to access the database. Right? So this is another clever hack with which what we have done is if the application's availability was just 99.9, uh, 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 and the underlying database availability, individual database availability was 99.9 .9 because we have a three factor uh, replication and we have within a region we have uh, uh, two clusters and in another region we will have two clusters and this is our setup. So now if this is capable of switching over here, uh, with that we are able to take it to close to six nines of availability. Just this piece, if the application was 99.9 9 available we are taking it to a 6 9 availability another small hack right so uh, then the third piece is uh, how do you handle failures right uh, uh, and this is a piece which people normally don't look at at uh, bcdr uh, your nines are on the basis of the time spent in outage agreed so how do you come out of the outage? So, one of the organization where I worked as uh, head of engineering, uh, there they were on cloud. Initially, they were not even 
so this is another experience where they were initially not even measuring the availability. So the thought process is what you cannot measure, you cannot control. We started to measure and we were around 90% uh, available, right? So we started to have a better incident management system. We had a responsive team, put a good uh, support system in place. We ensured any issue that comes within five minutes, we are able to fix it. There are exceptions, right? We, we, we had a good SLA with which just, just fixing that piece from a 90% availability, we became 99% available, right? So that's, that's a huge gap. Now that is another piece which is also important in this. What is your uh, day two operation setup looking like? Uh, uh, typically people don't put all of these pieces together. So I'm giving the pieces uh, for you to think through. There is one last uh, piece that I would wish to talk about. Uh, and uh, after that I would be happy to take questions. And uh, this piece is uh, more of, we spoke of the application layer, we spoke of the support system uh, which is happening and the, 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 the most important aspect is uh, the definition of SLA, right? So more often than not people, I am facing this trouble today at the organization, they say every service should be uh, responding in one second, that is its uh, SLA. Now that's the question, why? Right? So you need to have, so there is, uh, anyone can tell me what is an SLI or SLO or SLA? Is there a difference between the three? Yes. Yes, sir. Agreement and service level objective. Thank you. Um, uh, so typically any service you would have measurements put in place. And that is the observability piece you have on it. And that's the service level indicator, right? And, and based on the indicator, it's a business call to decide how important is that service? Do I need it real time? Do I need it near real time? Uh, does it really need to be available all the time? On the basis of it, fix its SLO. What is the objective of that service level, objective of that service? If you are doing a bad job, just as an example, should it be available all the time? No, if the batch job fails, it's not a big deal. You retry the batch and it's done, right? So that's the thought process. Uh, for example, um, coming from the bank, I would say if you are doing a fund transfer, it should be straight through, right, sir? If you would want it to be straight through. But you are requesting for a checkbook. If the service request for the checkbook failed, as a customer, you are okay with us parking it and retrying it and getting it through, for you the checkbook will come, right? One minute later the request goes through, it's not a problem for the customer, right? So there is a, there is a thought process on how you define the service level objective and hence the SLA of the service. So this is the third important piece to, piece to ensure the availability is up. And, and there are a few more things which are important here, for example, Every piece you need to look at and figure out if there is a um, uh, single point of failure. For example, you might have a, a risk engine component if you are a bank or, or, or a service which is using something like that. You need to think what if the risk system fails? How do I get the transaction through? Right? You might have an external system you depend upon. Um, a, a clear, uh, an example is I, the, one of the prior organization which I worked with, uh, we were using Gmail and we were a service on top of Gmail, right? Sometimes the Gmail API fails, thank you. Gmail API fails. Given that it fails, how do you take it forward and take it to closure? Uh, there is a thought process needed in there and if you put that thought process, I'm sure the architects I'm sure the development team will come up with a fix, but it's important to identify these and address them. Just to sum up, uh, the way you can achieve, some of them we discussed, one is having failover at every layer, uh, identify the single point of failures and ensure that uh, you don't have a serial connect, 
but at every layer you have a parallel connect so that you increase the availability at each layer and then get the definition right for SLO for each of the service. And most important thing is, uh, and this is something that I truly believe in, uh, you can keep uh, planning for perfection every day and not do anything, start with a good plan and improve it to perfection.